Hello and welcome back to Spirit Quest. I am your host and tour guide as we journey through the wonderful experience of whiskey together. Um, the whiskey that we are experiencing together today is Wild Turkey 101 Straight Bourbon Whiskey with a number four barrel char and 50.5% alcohol by volume or 101 proof which means if you light it on fire, it 100% will burn. Uh, so this whiskey burns in more way than one. Let's go ahead and nose it and give it a tasting, shall we? Oh yes, I do get clove in the nose in addition to wood and vanilla. I do get peppermint, other mint, uh, oil of wintergreen. I do get nutmeg in the nose. This drink very much reminds me of Christmas. Uh, this would be a good drink to enjoy on perhaps Christmas Eve or in a hot toddy. So, so much for the smell. Let's give it a taste. Oh yes, quite a lot of cinnamon. A little bit of ginger, gingerbread perhaps. Uh, oil of wintergreen carries through from the nose. So does mint and clove to a lesser extent. I would like to say at this time that we are going to have to add some water to this. It is 50% alcohol, so it burns quite a bit. <clears throat> as far as alcohol burn goes... This is not due to the quality of the spirit. Mind you, this is just simply due to the fact that it is 50% alcohol and alcohol does not play nicely with your mucous membranes. So, I'm just going to add 10 milliliters of water, which is 2 teaspoons. A teaspoon is approximately 5 milliliters. And this would be a lot for a normal whiskey, but I believe that this whiskey can handle a couple teaspoons and still maintain quite a bit of its flavor because it has quite a large flavor to begin with. So while we are waiting for the whiskey to open up, I would like to point out that the mash bill on Wild Turkey 101 for those who are interested, is 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% barley. And scotches, when we get into scotch, a scotch by law is 100% barley spirit. So, uh, ryes are at least 51% rye, bourbons are at least 51% corn. So you can get uh, an idea from sampling different whiskeys and knowing their various mash bills, which of the grains that you prefer. And uh, of course, the grains are corn, rye, barley, and wheat. Those are the main grains that are used in whiskey. Of course, any grain can be used. There is actually rice whiskey. There is quinoa whiskey. There are anything that's a grain can be made into a whiskey, strictly speaking. So this one, because it's a bourbon, is mostly corn. This is 75% corn, and anything that's high in corn is usually high in sweetness. And the sweetness that you are tasting is fructose, which is a literally fructose means fruit sugar it is a monosaccharide um, uh, the body cannot use fructose strictly speaking but the body can easily convert fructose into glucose which is what your body uh, runs off of for energy well technically it, it converts glucose to uh, ATP but that's that's a story for another day. That's a story for your anatomy and physiology class. That's not what I'm here to explain. I'm here to explain 
Wild Turkey 101 Straight Bourbon Whiskey. So, about Wild Turkey 101. It is an exemplary bourbon. It would give you an idea of what bourbon is as a category. It is by no means a top shelf bourbon. In fact, I would even argue that it is below a middle of the road bourbon, below an average or decent bourbon such as Maker's Mark. But I would say that it is above, <coughs> pardon me, I would say that it is above Jim Beam or Evan Williams, which I have already reviewed, and that's part of what turns me off to Wild Turkey 101 to begin with, is it's just kind of hanging out. It's between categories, it's not low end, it's not middle of the road, certainly not high end, but it, it is a quintessential prototype bourbon. So if you get the chance, it is worth experiencing. It is not my favorite thing, but it is worth experiencing. So, I think that this whiskey has sat long enough. Let's give it another nosing and tasting, shall we? Oh yes, more peppermint, pepper in the nose, yes. Oh, I get a little bit of bubble gum, actually. Oh my goodness, that's good. I get a lot of uh, cloves still, but not as pronounced as before. Oh yes, I get sweet gum. Lots and lots of bubble gum. Cinnamon lingers, nutmeg, cloves, ginger, allspice, all of your... Christmas, <clears throat> pardon me again, all of your Christmas spices are present in this whiskey. This whiskey is quite intriguing in that fact. It tastes kind of like, <clears throat> if Christmas were a pie, um, if you had Christmas pie, that's what I would describe this whiskey as tasting like. It tastes like liquid Christmas pie, if that makes sense. Uh, why don't you get a bottle of, of Wild Turkey 101 for yourself, nose it, taste it, water it down, nose it, taste it again, appreciate it, experience it, and give me your take on it in the comments. <clears throat> Please uh, be sure to like and share and subscribe if you found this content meaningful or useful. And I would like to add one other thing before we go. As we move on, the tasting notes and the nosing notes will get somewhat perhaps more confusing for the new or inexperienced whiskey drinker. So I would like to explain something about nosings and tastings very briefly. Um, when you hear somebody say, like me, that I smell clove in this whiskey, it's not that I put my nose in there and just got clove and nothing else and just, just a nose full of like if I'd have shoved a clove a whole clove up my nose it's not like that it's like past the obvious alcohol smell past the obvious wood smell past the normal bourbon smell what separates this from another bourbon that I have smelled is that this smells slightly more like cloves and that's really what we're doing when we do tasting notes or uh, nosing aroma notes, we are comparing kind of similar tastes and smells that we've experienced before to what we're experiencing now. We take what we're experiencing now and liken it or relate it to something that we have experienced in the past. And this is part of why that uh, tasting notes and aroma notes are so subjective because partly it depends on what you have experienced in the past 
and also it depends wh what flavor and smell receptors you have more of and by the way most of taste is smell um, sad to say and sorry to say if you didn't know that and you are smell blind now you know I'm sorry you're never going to experience whiskey quite like everybody else and you can try this experiment yourself plug your nose hold it and and drink some whiskey just like that just plug your nose experience it hold it in your mouth and release your nose and immediately you will get a flood of flavors on your tongue and the reason is because that most of what you're tasting is actually what you're smelling and your brain interprets certain aromas as you're tasting um, as tastes uh, don't ask me why but that's the way that it is so you actually only have four or five uh, flavor receptors on your tongue sweet salt sour like a lemon bitter like uh, coffee or uh, like a plant um, and possibly what they call umami which means meat basically and there's some debate about that the serious physiologists think kind of not but psychologists think kind of yeah so I'll leave that for you to decide but the important takeaway is that most of your tastes quote unquote are actually in your sense of smell and that when we do smelling and tasting notes we are comparing it to things we've had before so real briefly again let me give it one more nosing and tasting since it sat around for a couple more minutes let's see how much the flavor and aromas have changed oh well, that's good it's so much more gentle now and as you're nosing you might try nosing with your mouth open nosing with your mouth closed taking a very deep long and fast breath maybe a little bit down from there and again very slowly depending on your sensitivity to smell you may have to put your nose right down in it you may have to hold the glass a little bit below your nose you may have to waft it a little <coughs> sorry <laughs> got a little bit too much there uh, burnt my nose hairs <coughs> uh, the other thing that you might try doing smell with one nostril than the other and both together <clears throat> there's one other thing you can do to enhance the smell of your drink and your your perception of the aromas and that is to coat the glass with the whiskey and let it evaporate a little and I will show you how to do that right now let me put my microphone down there I don't know if you can see that but now the inside is wet with whiskey well oh, so much more clear cinnamon allspice gingerbread a little bit of lime actually yes I'm getting key limes as a matter of fact Yes, caramel, clove, your basic bourbon tastes, all very good. If you can, I'd recommend picking up a bottle of <laughs> Wild Turkey 101 and trying everything I've showed you how to try now. 
until next time thank you for coming with me on this journey on our spirit quest together and if i may ask a huge 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 favor of you please like and subscribe turn on your notifications share this video with your friends if you found any of the information here useful <clears throat> remember to spit out the bones don't take anything I say too seriously, but take it with a grain of salt. Maybe it'll help you out. I hope it's been entertaining. Until next time.